Good morning and welcome to the little town of Camelwill, which is about 15 kilometres from the Queensland NT border. It's currently about half past five in the morning and I'm up and ready to go. I just have to wait for the petrol station to open at six. Today is going to easily be the toughest day riding I'll be doing as I'll be crossing the merciless Barkley Tablelands. I'll tell you a bit more about them when I'm on the road. Fueled, jerry can fall, fed, by which I mean I had a picnic bar, uh, caffeinated, and I have four litres of water with me just in case. Alright folks, to quote a worn out meme, see you in the NT. And 15 kilometers out of Camowale, we are at the NT border. You can just see the sign there. I'm not going to stop for long or at all because I am going to keep going while the weather is cool. Anyway, I'm now into a new time zone. To use another worn out joke, I have to set me clock back half an hour and me calendar back 20 years. Just kidding, NT. You know I love you. I'm riding across a region known as the Bartley Tablelands today. And it takes up a good chunk of the eastern portion of the Northern Territory. It starts all the way up in Daly Waters and ends at the Queensland border. And to describe it as big and empty is to put it mildly. Just some facts and figures for you. It's 320,000 square kilometers approximately. That is slightly larger than the UK and Ireland combined. However, unlike the UK and Ireland, which have tens of millions of people living between the two islands, this place has a population of 5,900 people in an area bigger than the UK and Ireland. 5,900. It's about 450 kilometers from Camelwheel to Tennant Creek and there is one roadhouse and fuel stop along the way and other than the odd isolated cattle station nothing else. So I'm 242 kilometers from Barclay Roadhouse and I'm about 400 and something, I forgot what it said in the sign, to the Stuart Highway, just north of Tennant Creek. We are dealing with a really big, really empty place. Geographically, most of the Barclay Tablelands is characterized by what you see in front of you. Dead flat and covered in that bleached yellowy green grass you see either side of you. It's a type of grass called Mitchell grass. However, it does eventually turn in to the red dirt and spin effects that you associate with Central Australia. Now, you'd think that that would happen gradually over the course of hundreds of kilometers well, it doesn't. Just a little bit down the road here, it really suddenly changes from this into the red dirt of Central Australia. I'll get the drone up when I get there because it's pretty bloody spectacular. Okay, remember earlier when I told you that the landscape changes quite suddenly? Well, we're almost at that spot. I'll get the drone up once we're there.
way. The nothingness out here is fairly spectacular in its own right, isn't it? According to my thing, we are just about to hit 30 degrees. It's a quarter past eight in the morning. Apparently it's going to top out around 36 or 7 today, which I'm fine with. As long as the first number's not a 4, I'm all good. And we have arrived at Barclay Roadhouse. Two hundred and forty k's down. It's only a quarter past nine in the morning. I think I will be going further than tenant today. Anyway, the big quacker needs a drink, and I need some food and coffee. So let's do that. Fed, watered. Tank full of premium unleaded. Film of dead flies scraped off of my helmet, jacket, and headlight. Onwards to Three Ways Roadhouse, 190 or so kilometers from here, just north of Tennant Fucking Creek. Let's go! That turn brings you down to Boralula. It's a dirt road, but apparently it has the best barramundi fishing in the country, as well as the biggest crocodiles. just pulled over to stretch my legs and probably about 50 k's out of um, Barclay Homestead now there appears to be a big lake over there which I'd imagine is usually dry just coming out of the wet season here let's get the drone up again pleasant little surprise I'd imagine that lake is dry for you know nearly all of the time so I think I might have got lucky here drones are also great for exploring places like this because I wouldn't want to walk up to it because I'd imagine every snake within 500 kilometers has descended on that and I'm only kind of exaggerating there anyway I'm going to uh, put my headphones in listen to some music and get my ass to Barclay Roadhouse. No, I've been to Barclay Roadhouse. I'll get my ass to Three Ways Roadhouse. It helps when you go to the right place. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is that. I am being greeted by some roadworks and a red light. But anyway, a chronically ill man on a 14-year-old Kawasaki has just beaten the Barkley. That will do nicely. Ooh, and my fuel lights just come on. Anyway, I'm going to actually turn right here and head towards uh, the Three Ways Roadhouse, which is just up there. Fuel up, sit in my ass for half an hour. and do as little as I possibly can. I'm definitely not going to stay in Tennant Creek tonight. I am going to go somewhere much, much nicer, about 100 kilometers south. These lights are on the world's slowest countdown timer, 
so I've just turned my edge off to give the big quacka a well-earned rest. It's uh, 37 degrees at the moment, by the way, which is actually not too bad. At least it's not in the 40s. And we are away. Left is Alice Springs and on to Port Augusta. Right is to Darwin. Pretty much the only major junction in this part of the world. And there is three ways. Excellent. And we have achieved a new petrol high score. Two dollars and forty-two cents for premium unleaded. That's that's pretty steep for Australia anyway. Still cheaper than most of Europe. For the record, Barista Brothers iced coffee is terrible. As you can imagine, the paintwork on the bike has taken a bit of a hammering on this trip. And you can see there's a great big chunk gone out of it there, where obviously a stone hit it. Now, what I'm going to do is do a good old fashioned outback repair with a sticker that one purchases in the roadhouse. And there we go. Paintwork fixed. Anyway, as I mentioned earlier, I'm not going to actually stay in Tenon Creek tonight. I'm going to go about 115, 20 kilometers further down the road and stay at Walcop Roadhouse. Or hang on, they changed the name of it. I think it's called the Devil's Marbles Hotel now, which is probably a little ambitious, but it's a nice place regardless. Anyway, that means I get to pass the Devil's Marbles and they are well worth a look. But first, I have to go and reacquaint myself with an old friend. Tenant Creek. Hello darkness, my old friend. It's been a long, long time. Probably not long enough. For those of you who are new to my channel, 40, oh, for God's sake, they've reduced the speed limit through town. Anyway, for those of you who are new to my channel, I used to actually live here. Lived here for about three months in 2014, and then would come up here for, you know, a few weeks at a time doing backfill when I worked as a nurse for the Central Australia Mental Health Services. And me in this town, we have we have a bit of a checkered history. I'd liken it to a toxic ex-partner. You know, you know they're no good for you. They're really hot. You know you should stay away. But you keep coming back, don't you? I'm not going to record a full thing on this now. Hang on, I just want to see if my old boss's car is there. Nope. I'm not going to record a full th uh, video on this now. I'm saving that for the way back. This is just me riding through. As is typical for many outback towns, Tenon Creek's an old gold mining settlement. About a hundred years ago, when they were still pulling prodigious quantities of gold out of the ground, it had a population of about 30,000 people. These days, it's more like 3,000. It, it's a town that probably doesn't have a particularly bright future, unfortunately.
other than government workers and people who work on some mines in far-flung locations around here not a hell of a lot of employment for example as a result the crime and poverty levels in this town are absolutely insane unfortunately one of the main reasons I'm passing through today is because given that I'm camping I have limited means of securing my belongings even in the caravan park as such I don't feel entirely safe staying here in just a tent I'd be too scared to leave it and that's a terrible thing to have to say about a place but unfortunately I know this town well enough to know that if I fuck around I'll soon find out One hundred and thirteen kilometers to Walkop Roadhouse. Five hundred and three to the Alice. It's ten past one. A little part of me has thought, you know what, you'd make it to Alice by sundown, but that would be really pushing the boundaries. So Walkop it is. One of the reasons I like Central Australia so much is that it constantly surprises you. So I'm probably 90, 100 kilometers south of Tennant Creek now. And if you look to my left there, that's pretty much been the scenery the whole way. But once you get down this far, you might just be able to see in the distance that there's some low hills and the scenery is starting to change and in the middle of those hills is something really bloody special so I'll show you that in a second so here we are at a place called the Devil's Marbles or Carlu Carlu, as it's known to the Warramungu people who are the traditional owners of this land. It was a men's meeting place for them. In their culture, they have separate meeting sites for men and women. And I'll be going to a women's meeting site in a few days' time, which is also spectacular. But right now, We're at this men's meeting site and what I'm going to do is just get the drone up because this is freaking awesome. simply the huge boulders you see all around you are erosion resistant lumps of sandstone that have been there probably for hundreds of millions of years and all of the landscape around it has been worn away blown away by the wind by whatever rains they occasionally get here and the boulders have just been left exposed and some of them are balanced really really precariously it's really quite something to see what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go over and just get a camera shot of me standing next to some of them just to give you a bit of scale on the size of these things because the camera isn't gonna do them justice so uh, 
One second. Bear in mind, folks, that I'm 192 centimeters or in and around six foot four, if you prefer. So uh, let's do a little comparison. They were big. Seriously, if you're in Central Australia, you need to come here. It really is an amazing place. It's about 400 k's north of Alice, so you can get here at NT speeds in about four hours, less even. Also, they are a mere 11 kilometers from my overnight stop. And I am very, very happy about that because I've done, oh, I'd say at least 600 kilometers today. I'll put the exact total up on the screen. There is free camping down there, but I'm going to the roadhouse down the road because they have cold beverages, food, and even a swimming pool. And all those things sound good right about now. I actually remember first reading about the Devil's Marbles in Bill Bryson's book, Down Under. And I remember he remarked that if that was in Europe or the United States, the place would be absolutely thronged with people. I had the whole thing to myself for most of the time I was there. How amazing is that? Woke up Roadhouse. When I worked as a mental health nurse out at Tennant Creek, I'd be going out to some of the remote communities around here. And we used to often stop here for lunch. Never thought I'd be so happy to see the place again. Oh God, I need a cold lemony beverage. And I have just remembered how utterly amazing the sunsets are in Central Australia. Good luck.